Hey everyone, this is Amy Roskelly. I am the Conservation Education and Communications Manager for the Cuyahoga Soil and Water Conservation District. And this presentation is called Let the Flares See the Air. We're going to talk about trees, the importance of trees, and not just planting trees, but we're going to look at some trees that are planted incorrectly and see what we can do about that. So again, I work for the Soil and Water Conservation District in Cuyahoga County. Our mission is up there, and if you want to find out more information about us, you can uh, visit our website. The district is also a member of the Cleveland Tree Coalition, and the Cleveland Tree Coalition is, is a group of agencies who are working to improve the tree canopy uh, within the city of Cleveland. Now, a lot of us know the importance of trees, why we should plant them, why we should take care of them. Uh, they prevent floods. They can uh, generate revenue. They're a stress reliever, provide shade, air filtration, uh, and of course be uh, an insect hotel for um, some, some bugs and also birds as well. So a lot of important uh, reasons why we should plant trees and care for trees. One great asset is iTree. If you go to iTreeTools.org, you can actually see the benefits of your tree beyond some of those things that I just mentioned. It prints out this really cool um, chart over here on the left that looks like a food label almost. And uh, I put in a red maple. Uh, I put that the red maple was about 20 years old. And based on the diameter that I put in of the tree, it, it brought me back these benefits of that particular tree. And you can see it's not just the, the, the beautiful uh, look of the tree. It's also these things that are really making an impact on the environment. And the one we're most interested in at the Soil and Water District is the amount of stormwater that it's going to intercept and to hold off running into our waterways. Uh, this, this tree itself, over 20 years, of course it has a long life to go after that, will intercept about 27,000 gallons of rain and it's going to avoid about 4,800 gallons of runoff, which is a pretty big impact. So let's talk about trees in the forest. When you see a tree in the forest, it is planted there naturally. It's not something that is, um, that man, you know, uh, we go out and do. Uh, it's done naturally and you see a tree and you see the area where the tree meets the roots and then it has what's called a root flare down there. So the root flare is the area where the trunk meets the roots and the supporting roots emerge. So there's, there's no rhyme or reason really in the forested area the trees just grow where they may. If you get into more of an urban setting we actually go out and plant the trees where we want them which means that we also have to maintain them. Uh, along a streetscape, you want to be sure that you don't have branches hanging down that will hit people in the face as they walk by. And you want to be sure you're planting the right tree in the right place so it doesn't grow too tall and grow into any power lines or telephone lines above. So you really have to be a little calculated about, um, about what kind of tree you put in the right place. So these are trees. They have a lot in common, um, but they do have a little bit of different focus when you go from the forest tree over to an urban tree. Uh, the one thing they really have in common is the root flare always needs, needs to be exposed on a tree. So the root flare, as I mentioned, is where the trunk of the tree meets the roots and those supporting roots emerge. It is the area where the trunk transitions from the trunk bark tissue over into the root system tissues. Um, when a tree like this does not have the root flare exposed, uh, you don't have good oxygen exchange in those roots. And it's a really important area that we're going to discuss in, in much more detail here in, in a few minutes. So at the district, we do a lot of tree planting. Uh, Megan over here on the left planted a tree uh, across the street from our office. And you can see that nothing is touching the, the root flare of that, the, that small young tree. And all the mulch is in a donut shape around it, not piled up against the tree. And we also do uh, community tree plantings where we have people come out and they plant trees with us and for us and when we plant trees and other agencies we know plant trees we know they're planted correctly and we know that they're cared for how they should be throughout their life and we make sure of that um, with management plans but a lot of times you see trees around that are planted incorrectly and they are not taken care of so we're in the business of part of the business of planting trees and growing trees seeing something like this is not how you plant a tree, it is how you kill a tree. So a lot of times people will uh, plant a tree too low and it will look like a telephone pole. It doesn't have any sort of root flare at the bottom at all. This is a volcano mulch, and or I like to call it a mulch zit. And what I want to do every time I see this is 
pop that volcano mulch zit or blow up that volcano. I don't know where this started, why this started, why it continues, or why anybody thinks this is any way you should, in any way that you should plant a tree. And there are some really, really bad cases of this. This is one of the worst I've ever seen. Uh, this is a young tree that was just, the, the soil and mulch is just piled, you know, a fourth of the way up the tree. And it's absolutely awful. When you have something like this, all that mulch and soil that's around that tree is going to soften the tree bark and it's going to allow pathogens and insects to penetrate the bark and damage the tree. You're also going to get a lot of girdling roots, meaning you're going to have roots that don't grow down into the soil. They're going to grow around into that mulch volcano and they're going to grow around the trunk of that tree and girdle the tree or choke the tree. It's going to limit the uptake of water, nutrients, and oxygen that can get to the tree. And it's also going to make that trunk of the tree very weak over time. So that tree will not be as stable, which means it's a safety issue and it could fall down in a storm or, you know, with high winds. The tree is going to grow. Um, this is the misconception. The tree is going to grow, um, but it will never fill out its life expectancy as, as it should. An average tree, I'm saying, you know, probably lasts about 50 years or so, give or take a little less, a little more. Uh, a tree like this will grow, so people think, hey, it's okay. A tree like this will maybe last, at max, I would think, 10 years. Um, but sometimes we've seen them as, as small as three years. If you really dig in there, the tree is, is sick and the tree is dying. So once you see this issue, you can't unsee it. It is everywhere. It is very pervasive in our society. And again, I don't know where this came from or where this practice was. I am 48 years old and I've never seen this. I don't remember ever seeing this as a kid. Um, it's something that I found in the past maybe five years or so, five to 10 years that this has become practice. And I don't understand um, what the reasoning is behind this. Um, one of my favorites, and I use that term sarcastically, is when I see a tree, a ball and burlap tree, which is a tree like the one on the left here. Um, it's a way to package the tree from the nursery over to the site where it's going to be grown or going to be delivered to, to go to the place where it's grown. It is a packaging. It's a packaging for the tree. When a spade goes into the ground and it digs out the tree at the nursery, it pushes that soil up over the root flare and then they wrap it in burlap and then wrap wire around it, a cage around it, and sometimes put uh, ratchets around it as well. Uh, what you need to do when you get a ball and burlap tree is unwrap it just like you'd unwrap a present and take off the burlap, take off the wire cage, and make sure that root flare is exposed uh, on that tree. So you have to prepare that before you plant it. On the right is something I see all the time when I'm out looking at these and, and getting quite angry actually at the, uh, the irresponsibility of, of planting these trees, um, or not planting these trees rather. So what I've seen a lot on, on large areas of land are where somebody will come in and they just basically scrape the ground um, and then plop the ball and burlap tree with the wire and the burlap still on it and then just cover it with soil and mulch and make this big volcano. And this is not, again, this is not how you plant a tree. This is how you kill a tree. And you see this everywhere. Once this is brought to your attention, again, you'll see it all over the place. And hopefully you'll get as fired up about it as I am and want to do something about it. So this tree here just started drinking because it knew that its life was uh, coming to a short end and it thought it would go out with a bang. So it's got a little wild Irish rose there, I think. So, you know, just wanted to go out with a bang. So I got wind one morning that um, a friend called me and said some trees were being planted close to my house. Uh, they were being planted incorrectly, and I should go up there and check it out. So I grabbed my soil knife, and on a Sunday morning I went out and I looked at this tree. And sure enough, uh, as I started, well, I knew as soon as I looked at it, but as soon as I started digging, I found that the top of the soil and the mulch was where my finger's pointing on the right. And I dug down about six or seven inches or so, and I still couldn't find the root flare. I still never found it on the tree. And you also see a lot of those roots that are already were already in the root ball that were going, if left how it is, it's going to start growing around the tree and choke that tree and, um, and really make that tree very sick. So not a good scenario. So some people will go in and they'll try to fix trees like this if it's not too late. Usually it is too late, but on the left, 
you have a tree that uh, they've taken what's called an air spade and blown air into the trunk of the tree to get rid of all the soil and mulch that was piled around it. Uh, if you see in there, all of those roots in there are roots that are girdling around the tree and eventually will suffocate the tree if they have not already. Uh, the, the area on the, the left of that tree, you can see that the trunk of that tree is quite wet, um, which means it's softening the tree bark, making it uh, less stable, and it's allowing pathogens and insects to get into that tree and infect it. On the right, your tree is a little bit further along, and those, tree, those uh, girdling roots are much more established, so they, that, that tree is very hard to fix, and that tree will uh, be a goner and, and, uh, within a number of years, and you won't get the life that you want out of that tree. Um, what, what really irks me about this a lot is that it's not just a waste of money, it's a waste of time, it's a waste of resources, and it's a very irresponsible way to plant a tree. It's a lazy way to plant a tree. If you do it correctly the first time, if you care for it, these trees will give back to you so much that it is, it is completely worth the amount of money and time you spent in planting that tree and growing that tree. So what I fear is that kids are going to see a tree and they're going to draw trees and perceive trees uh, differently in the future. So I'm not an artist, clearly, uh, but this is a picture of a tree that I drew and how I would draw a tree when I was a kid with the flare at the bottom, because that's what I saw. So my fear is that in, in the near future, kids are going to start drawing trees like this, like the one on the right, because people, people learn what they see. So when you go into a restaurant or you go into a, an office park or you go into um, a, a business or shopping mall or something like that and you see trees planted like this, you don't give it much mind. Uh, so consciously or subconsciously, you are looking at these trees with these big volcano mulches around them and thinking, well, that's just, that's just how trees look. And it absolutely is not how a tree should look. So we really want happy trees. We don't want sad trees the mulch should always be pulled away from the trunk. So what can we do about this issue? Um, what we can do about it is just say no to Volcano. That's my little tagline there for this project. Um, I want you all to say it with me or say it by yourselves there as you're watching this presentation. I want you to really get into saying this because it's something that really needs to be fixed and needs to be addressed and hopefully fixed within our, our community. So we're only one set of eyes at the Soil and Water Conservation District. We've held a workshop on this where people asked me, well, what are you going to do? And I was like, I'm going to get angry about it, um, but I'm also knowing that that is not going to solve the problem. So I want to enlist you to help out with this issue. Um, we're creating a database of places where this planting is happening, or not planting, this killing is happening, actually. And um, if you can let us know, where the, um, the trees are planted incorrectly like this, where you see a lot of volcano mulch trees. Uh, we'll have it listed on our website at CuyahogaSWCD.org. There's a form you can fill out and tell us where you saw this, what the address is, um, how many trees you saw like this, and a contact if you have one. And then, uh, of course, you can send us a picture of the issue as well. And our intent is to follow up with these and educate the people who own that property on what is happening on their, uh, with their trees, with their landscaping, and see if we can get them to make better choices and to hopefully fix their trees and not make those choices in the future. So again, visit our website, CuyahogaSWCD.org, or you can call me directly. My number is there, and then my email as well. Thank you, everyone.